So, so, so Seb, come on up here. You can't hide in the back on this one, buddy. You gotta stand right up here, front and center. So the reality is, man, it, uh, 2013, I got, I got the chance to, uh, I don't know if it was a chance at first, I honestly, I thought, I need the money, and this Jay Pinsky guy seems like he's got some, so I'm gonna go spot for them. <laughs> and this guy that everybody told me wasn't an oval racer, and I was like, I don't care. No, 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 they told you I was an asshole. <laughs> no, that's what I thought. But it's cool. I was a PT fan as a kid, what do you want me to do? And so, it wasn't, didn't take very long, maybe two sessions, and I thought, well, he's actually a pretty cool cat. And by the end of the season, he said, hey, I'm going to this thing called KV, do you want to go? And the rest is history, but uh, we've had great times. We've had shit times, we've won races, we've been to the hospital, we've argued, we've hugged, but uh, I wouldn't change it, man, so thank you. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna, we're going to keep these short, and next up on the list... Sebastian was uh, uh, 05 in Surface Parallel, it's nuts, man, this is my 17th year in IndyCar, but uh, when, I, when I came from Europe, he was the man in uh, Champ Car, and... Uh, uh, he was a, a you know absolute master. So I've learned a lot of Sebastian. I guess our relationship started off pretty rocky. <laughs> Took me out in my home race. Not you didn't take whatever it was. I'm, <laughs> see, we we still actually argue over this. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. Just watch the video. <laughs> I mean, I, only, I know Sebastian as a, just such a tough competitor, and I always say it, like, it's just crazy that no team has picked him up, because any team that he goes to, he sorts that car. When I saw him go to KV, you know, those guys started running at the front. When I saw him go to Coin, suddenly they were winning races. When I saw him go to Foyt, the same thing. So he's, uh, he's a very technical, crazy fast driver, and... Um, it's been really cool to compete against you, and I, I, I it's, this isn't retirement, right? You are maybe going to compete with uh, Craig. I mean, why wouldn't you have him on McLaren, man? You, he could still, you've got, you've got, you've got two young drivers. Like he would contribute so much. He'd be running at the front. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Sebastian was a fuel save master, and obviously. Uh, in Champ Car, when he was in the top team, he was unbeatable. And uh, I remember in 07, we went head to head quite a few times. And uh, it's just really cool to race against you, man. And you are such a good person, tough competitor, and an arsehole, like at the track. But <laughs> <laughs> deep down, an amazing person, like uh, a very, very cool, cool person, always willing to help you. and. I just think the best thing about Sebastian is that he's he's brutally honest, like almost embarrassingly honest, which is what the world needs. Um, you, I, and I think I think the the thing I'm gonna miss, the thing I miss the most about him is the driver meetings in IndyCar. Like, like he will like just go at it with the race race directors. It's uh, it's really cool because I'm thinking the same thing, but he's saying it. And uh, I think that's the best thing about Sebastian. And he's just just honest, honest, honest guy. And um, I really would love to have been a teammate with you because I think we would have worked well together. And um, man, you you were you were. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll race sports car together, but he's an absolute legend of IndyCar racing, um, you know, four championships, and I really feel like that year he crashed in Indy was his year to win it. Um, he was the quickest guy, and and that's, that's what's cool about him. He will put it on the line. I'm sure his wife told him that he was ne never allowed to do that again, but, <laughs> but watching, watching him in action, he will never lift. He's, uh, he's very brave. Pretty smart too, and uh, super quick. But uh, yeah, man, I don't know what this is. This birthday or retirement or what? Both. Uh, it's yeah, his birthday it's tomorrow, birthday. so we'll just put in the ha birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, man! It's been really cool to to race against you. Love you, man. You know what to do with it. <laughs> this one's gonna be a Hall of Fame speech by a Hall of Famer himself. Thanks, Chris. Um. Man, first off, thank you everybody for coming. Like, this is a really special night. We've gotten together some people who we haven't seen for a long, long time. And that means a lot to him. It means a lot to me. 
Thank you for organizing this. Thank you, Claire, for putting this together. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll give you the credit and blame him. Yes, of course. Um, I first met Sebastian about 19 years, three or four months ago. Super cold day in Chicago, snowing, comes in for a seat fitting. We weren't doing it right. <laughs> so he took the tools, the hot knife and the knife and cut the seat himself, so it was just so. He flew back to Europe for a Formula One test. He spun the car once, so he didn't get the job. And then he came back to Sebring and we had a shootout. So he drives the car, it's a super well-sorted car, it just won the championship, the motor's amazing, we've got great grip, and he comes in and he starts bitching about the traction, and it's not turning, and you gotta fix this for me to go faster. And then when he's not driving the car, he's on the timing stand, on the intercom, watching the telemetry, asking questions and telling us what we're doing wrong. <laughs> So I got home from the test, and it's just before Christmas, and I looked at my wife and I said, what I want for Christmas is us to get Sebastian Bournet's name on a contract. Well, he drove a hard bargain with Carl Haas. I think you took him for $70,000 that year. It was tough. Yeah, I gave up, I gave up what? I had a 250,000 euro contract with Opel, and then I said, fuck this, I'm doing 70. <laughs> But I think in the end it worked out. Um, we loved like brothers. We fought like brothers. Together with some phenomenal teammates, we achieved some amazing things. I know that's taken you and your family to a really good place. It's taken me and my family to a really good place. But I hope you all take away and you know that though he's pretty opinionated, you will always know exactly what he's thinking. There is no varnishing it, but he's not hiding anything either. He's a phenomenal human being. He cares about each and every one of you. The truck drivers, the mechanics, the tire guy, the engineers. He knows your name. Even the spotter. <laughs> you can hit him, you're closer. It's not too hard. <laughs> I almost killed him at Indy, so I'm not allowed to do that anymore. Sorry, Claire. He cares about all of you, and he's a genuinely good guy. And uh, I wouldn't be where I am today without him. So thank you.